Much of the digestion of food and absorption of digested food into our bloodstream occurs in the small intestine. The small intestine is where food goes after leaving the stomach. It is a long tube which is coiled up tightly in order to fit into our abdominal cavity. The diameter of the small intestine is about 2.5 to 3 centimeters. Its small diameter is the reason it's called the small intestine, but its length certainly isn't small. If we took the average human small intestine and straightened it out, it would reach about 7 meters. Compare this with the height of an average person, which is about 1.8 meters. The first 25 to 38 centimeter section of the small intestine is called the duodenum. This is where most of the digestion in the small intestine occurs. The liver is a large organ with many different functions. One of its functions is to produce bile, which is important in digestion. The pancreas is an organ located just below and behind the stomach. It produces many substances that are important for digestion. There is also a network of ducts or tubes leading from the liver and pancreas to the duodenum. Here are some bile ducts. The gallbladder is an expandable pouch in which bile is stored. It is found just under the liver. And the pancreatic duct carries pancreatic juice from the pancreas to the duodenum. We'll zoom in on the area around the duodenum. The liver produces a substance called bile, which fills the gallbladder and bile ducts. And the pancreas produces a mixture called pancreatic juice, which fills the pancreatic duct. Now we'll close the pyloric sphincter and imagine some chyme in the stomach. The sphincter opens briefly and lets some chyme into the duodenum. Bile is secreted from the bile duct into the duodenum. Partially digested food at this point contains some large fat particles. We'll show one here. Bile physically breaks up large fat particles into smaller ones. This process is called emulsification. Here's how it works. We see the large fat particle breaking up into smaller particles. No chemical reactions occur during emulsion. This is a type of physical digestion. The presence of bile also causes chyme to change color during its time in the duodenum. Looking at the small fat particles, we see they have a very large combined surface area. This greatly speeds up the action of enzymes, which break down fats chemically. Now we'll move back over here. At the same time as bile is secreted, pancreatic juice also enters the duodenum from the pancreatic duct. We'll discuss what pancreatic juice does. Pancreatic juice is a complex mixture of bicarbonate ions and a number of enzymes. It is very important for digestion in the duodenum of the small intestine. We'll look at some of its main functions here. Chyme comes from the stomach and is therefore highly acidic, containing many H plus ions. Bicarbonate ions in the pancreatic juice move into the duodenum and they come in contact with the acid present and they neutralize it. Now the chyme is no longer acidic and it will not harm the intestinal walls. So we'll summarize here that bicarbonate ions coming in with the pancreatic juice are basic and therefore they neutralize excess acid in the chyme. Although some proteins are broken down in the stomach, there are still proteins remaining in the chyme when it reaches the duodenum. Pancreatic juice contains enzymes that will break down proteins. In the duodenum, these enzymes mix with proteins and with a series of chemical reactions break down the protein molecules into their building blocks, amino acids. So we'll summarize here that pancreatic juice has enzymes which break down proteins into amino acids. Chyme also contains undigested fats. Bile breaks down large fat globules into smaller ones, but it doesn't chemically break down fats. Pancreatic juice also contains enzymes that will break down fats. In the duodenum, these enzymes mix with the fats and with a series of chemical reactions break down the fat molecules into their building blocks, fatty acids. So here we can summarize that pancreatic juice brings enzymes into the duodenum that will break fats down into their building blocks, fatty acids. Chyme from the stomach contains some carbohydrates that have not been broken down into simple sugars. These can include starches and more complex sugars. 
Pancreatic juice also contains enzymes which break down complex carbohydrates into simple sugars. These combine with the carbohydrates and through a series of chemical reactions break down these carbohydrates into simple sugars. So we'll summarize here that pancreatic juice brings enzymes that break down complex carbohydrates into simple sugars in the duodenum. The amino acids, fatty acids, and simple sugars that are produced by chemical digestion in the duodenum can be absorbed into the bloodstream. This happens farther down in the small intestine. You may want to pause the video and take a screenshot and print this so you can use it to study from. Now we'll have a look at the rest of the small intestine. We'll imagine some of the chyme leaving the duodenum and moving through the rest of the small intestine. Most of the nutrients get absorbed as it slowly makes its way through. Now we'll take a closer look at what is happening on the inside wall of the intestine. As we zoom into the wall, we see it has finger-like projections on it. These projections on the inside of the surface of the intestine are called villi. They are present throughout the whole small intestine. Having all these folds greatly increases the inner surface area of the intestine. Because nutrients are absorbed through this surface, the villi enhance our ability to absorb nutrients. The cells covering the inner surface of the small intestine have very tiny hair-like projections. These are called microvilli. The presence of these increase the surface area for absorption of nutrients by another huge factor. Now we'll examine a single villus in more detail. Small blood vessels go into each villus. These red arrows show the direction of blood flow in this case. The blood vessels branch into tiny capillaries inside the villus. Lymph is a liquid that travels throughout the body. Lymph vessels also go into each villus. Here is the lymph vessel shown in light blue. The small intestine contains various nutrients resulting from digestion in the mouth, stomach, and duodenum. We'll represent these with symbols in this table. This symbol will stand for amino acids, the breakdown product of proteins. This symbol will stand for simple sugars, the breakdown products of more complex carbohydrates. And this symbol will represent fatty acids, the breakdown products of fats. We see that amino acids and simple sugars move through the membranes into the villus where they enter the capillaries and go into the bloodstream. Smaller fatty acids move directly into the capillaries and go into the bloodstream, and larger fatty acids move into the lymph vessels through which they will later move into the bloodstream. Remember that all this absorption is happening as food is moving through the small intestine. Now we'll zoom back out to the small intestine and see where our food sample is now. At this point, most of the nutrients have been removed, but there's still some material remaining that cannot be absorbed. These remains move through the lower part of the small intestine toward the entrance to the large intestine.